So, hi everyone. I think we are ready to start this session. Um, my name is Dennis. I'm the CEO of BlockSquare. Um, <clears throat> and I'm here today not to pitch. Usually when I pitch BlockSquare, um, I start by saying that real estate is the biggest asset class in the world. Um, I then go and add to that that at the same time, it's also one of the most illiquid investments you can make. And I elaborate on that by saying that it's an asset class that is hard to access, that's time consuming, and that is capital intensive. And of course, I have the solution for all of the shortcomings. Tokenization is here. It's here to change how we do real estate investments. But what I don't say is that real estate, at the same time, it's also one of the most conservative industries in the world. In the past three years, I indulged myself in an exploratory journey. And today I wanna talk about this journey and share it with you here online. It all started in 2016 when three enthusiasts of blockchain technology, Peter, Victor, and I, started a, a so-called blockchain lab. We organized this within Victor's IT development company, Medius, and the goal of this blockchain lab was to, to research the technology, uh, research smart contracts, and see where we could apply this on various verticals. And researching blockchain technology, we at a certain point came to the real estate sector. Now I had not much experience um, within real estate investments. I only made one smaller family, let's say uh, family done investment at the time. Um, and so I had some understanding of you know, how you acquire property, how you secure financing, um, and how you collect rent, let's say, out of that. Now, Victor had some experience within medias working with the government on, on titles, on the land registry systems. And Peter had uh, a vast understanding of, of FinTech and the legal implications of it. Um, so we started looking into into the applicability of blockchain within the real estate sector, which is a broad term, of course. But within that blockchain lab, we started understanding that we can use the technology to issue digital shares, digital stakes in any investment, let's say, or any asset. We just needed to find out how to connect a certain asset type to this digital token. And so we found a way to legally connect a token issued on a blockchain to a physical property like a real estate property. And the good part is that you have land registries and because of that, that asset type has the most potential in our view. And soon after this, we formed BlockSquare, a startup that would create a system for real estate tokenization and of course, when you start a new venture, you need some funding. At that time, there was ICOs running around. And we saw this as an opportunity for a Slovenian startup to receive some funding and start and create an MVP product, a minimum viable product. Now, we started, we were nobody, and we started basically researching ICOs as well. And we saw that collecting millions of, of dollars worth of cryptocurrency is not the right way to do, to do it. Especially in, when you're researching something that you know, hasn't been done before. And so we collected a small investment at the time and we used that investment to create a product. And that product was then the beginning of, of basically of block square. 
So we got funding, we had a product after three, three months of development, and now we wanted to add a property to it. And what we did is we turned to the real estate sector. We found a young team of brokers um, here in Slovenia, and we started searching for the right property to tokenize. And it was not easy because either the properties were too huge, too big in value, or too meaningless, uh, or not meaningful enough in the eyes of the broker. So we were searching for the right property to, to do a pilot case on it. And unfortunately, we were not able to find something, something tangible on the market. Because when we interviewed investors, we saw that the cryptocurrency community was not interested in investing in tokenized real estate. On the other hand, the traditional investment uh, folks were more leaning towards it, but they required more certainty, more track record. And of course, when you deploy a new product, you don't have those. So we needed to find a property that would not require a lot of capital. So we found minimal viable property. And like everything, big things sometimes can have small beginnings. And this inspired us to find a parking space. Not a parking lot, not a parking garage, but one single parking space. And we went, acquired that parking space, and we tokenized it, and we sold it. We didn't know who we would attract with this offering. But the good thing was that the pilot was a success. We sold the property tokens in just 16 days to about 18 enthusiastic investors from all around the world. And this small, small, tiny property tokenized produced some small time PR. And this PR enabled us to reach out to more than um, to also receive a small uh, uh, some recognition from the cryptocurrency community. We also received uh, a very important award for us in this journey, um, where CV Labs awarded us the title of most innovative blockchain prop tech startup um, in Europe. And then this all produced, of course, inquiries, because we wanted to, now we had the product, we had the use case, and we said, okay, now we can start selling the, the, the software, our solution. We can start selling that and deploying that to companies who want to indulge in real estate tokenization. We can really make it easy for them to do it. And we received inquiries for all around the world. And we started handpicking those that we thought were the most interesting clients for us. These were from, from bigger companies to small local companies, startups. And we created case studies with them. We worked on case studies on properties worth 50K, 100K to large uh, commercial properties worth 200 million. And these case studies were different uh, from each other. We saw how tokenization can be applied um, to this traditional asset class. But six months in, and a lot of effort to acquire, we had the goal of acquiring three clients. Well, we had zero clients after six months. Nobody wanted to do the, the next step. They, they were proven on paper that things make sense but nobody went on to acquire a license, a software license from us to actually start executing it. We even had companies fly in to Ljubljana and talk to our team, see our development team, and well, we were kind of disappointed, of course. So we stopped a bit and backed for a few uh, steps. And um, we, we, we wanted to understand why, what's the reason behind behind this, you know, um, this, uh, this unable, uh, uh, that we were un unable to, to make any sales. 
So, uh, so we divided, we were able to divide these companies into two groups. We saw that one type of companies are really big and maybe they're nation, nationwide known or internationally known. And what they are after actually is PR. So they want to create positive PR for their brand. On the other hand, we had this small to medium enterprises with, that were after immediate profits. And of course, when you do something novel, um, there's a lot of things that can affect your success. In the PR term, Bitcoin was going down in price. So there was a lot of bad, bad news around it. And of course, big corporations, they, they said, hey, let's just wait, on, wait a bit on this. We don't need to rush it. And so they postponed uh, our efforts to work with them for six months or indefinitely. And on the other hand, these small to medium enterprises, what they did is they calculated how much effort they would need to put, but not just effort, also money, money and human resources into producing just one tokenized property, let's say. And they saw they don't have those at hand or they don't have spare resources to put in these projects. So what happened then is they also postponed their, uh, their, their tokenization efforts and said, wait, we'll wait for the big guys to, to start doing it and then we'll follow, follow suit. Now, of course, what do you do with when you have, when you have zero clients, um, but you have a lot of knowledge, you have a lot of experiences, you gained a lot of use cases, because I, I know that each company we worked with brought a lot of knowledge to our table. They wanted to make sure that we understood their business thoroughly. And so we used that knowledge and created a business case for a new company to be formed. And we invited around our table a few investors and presented that idea to them. We presented an idea um, of how traditional means of financing real estate investments can be used in join, uh, jointly with tokenization. And so we formed a business idea where investors will put their money into the company and traditional means like uh, bank loans will be used to invest in properties. Um, and then this company will tokenize these properties for a, high, a, a little bit higher valuation and create some profits on it and reinvest the money um, into new properties and to refinance, um, refinance the bank's loans. And so here we are today um, with our first client, uh, a company that we also invested in not only in tech terms, but also in terms of, of knowledge and money. Um, and this company has acquired a property that will create a deal value of a, about 1 million US dollars. It's not a big amount in terms of real estate, but we believe that it can inspire, if successful as a business model, entrepreneurs around the world to adopt it and work with us to create new business opportunities in other jurisdictions worldwide. Now, thank you for this keynote. Thank you for uh, Wouter and the team at the Global PropTech for, for allowing me to, to speak shortly to the audience here online, which is a bit weird because you don't know who's listening on the other side, you don't know if people are interested in what you have to say. Um, but I hope I did not pitch Block Square, but instead told an interesting story to all of you here. Thank you. There's no uh, website as of now, but it will be online in a month or so. Uh, at the moment, the, the company is working on the renovations on that property um, and on the lease agreements. I think it's been already leased out, most of it. Uh, it's a student accommodation house uh, in Ljubljana. And uh, there's about 30 tenants 
in in the property. <laughs> Thank you, Henrietta. Um, we look forward to seeing it as well. Um, especially the good part, I guess, from tokenizing something that is already financed um, is that there's no rush in the sale process. Um, and this is something that a lot of times people don't understand in terms of real estate tokenization. Oh. There is one question in the Q&A section. Okay, sorry. Okay, how does your company work collaborate with a small startup property project? From Eric. Um, so, what we do is we offer a software as a service and, and a legal solution. It depends, of course, on, on where the, pro the company works, uh, works from. Um, the legal solution part, I mean, but um, what we offer for them is a white label solution. So basically, um, they can start their own business and don't mind on the mind on the on the tokenization system in the back running it. Um, so first thing we do is we connect with the with the company. Usually, they inquire uh, through email. Um, about our services, we then do some um, some short sessions online, get to know each other, and see how how they want to uh, proceed with with uh, their projects. We still have from those inquiries and and case studies, we still have ongoing relationships with those companies, and it's not excluded they will not continue uh, in their efforts. But these smaller teams usually. Are, uh, don't have the, the right funding or the right knowledge to execute, execute projects. So we try to uh, make up for those shortcomings.